reveals women pay more than men and it goes beyond retail items. This is Local 12 News live at 5. Breaking news alerts and the hour by hour forecast from the Weather Authority. This is Local 12 News. Well, it's kind of scary um, because it could happen here with us also. Another fire in another abandoned building in a local city has some people keeping a closer eye on their neighborhoods. Good evening, everyone. Another vacant building caught on fire overnight in Covington. It's the second one this month and at least the fourth in the last three months. No one has been hurt in any of the fires, but three of them damaged other buildings and the city had to demolish two of them. Local 12's Joe Webb joins us live from Covington with what he's learned about the blazes. Joe. Well, Rob, Covington has seen vacant building fires for generations, but not very many like the one last night. This one on 4th Street is in an historic building on a very busy street in one of the city's nicest neighborhoods. And fires in vacant buildings are expensive to the city, dangerous to firefighters, and scary for neighbors. The scene overnight was all too familiar for Covington firefighters and residents. 220 East 4th was vacant and on fire. Uh, they're, they're problematic in that, you know, we... We have no idea what condition they're in, uh, so we're potentially sending people into a, a structure that's, uh, you know, been uh, it's dilapidated and unsafe and structurally unsound. Uh, we don't know who's in them. Uh, occasionally, we have squatters residing in them uh, accidentally set in fire, so there's a life safety issue, right? And then there's the scar left on the neighborhood. Two months ago today, a vacant home at 16th and Scott caught fire and spread to its next-door neighbor. Today, it's still blocked off except where impatient pedestrians have ripped through the sidewalk barricade. Two weeks ago, 2017 McAvoy went up and trashed the homes on either side of it. Neighbor Moma Sammy was not surprised. That the um, landlords need to do a better care of their property, you know. I mean, if it's vacant, of course every stray is going to go in there and lay eggs. So what you expect to happen? The city tore down that home. They've also torn down the vacant house at Scott and Martin that burned October 6th. The city has a program to level problem places long before they become a hazard, but it's hard to keep up. I think what you have is a much higher volume of vacant properties. So, you know, I think our, I don't think our fire volume has increased at all. It's just that we have more vacant properties. Therefore, it's a vacant property catching fire as opposed to an occupied structure. Now, according to the city of Covington's own statistics, there are currently 1,522 abandoned structures in the city of Covington. Now, last night's fire is still under investigation by the Covington Fire Department. And, Rob, it's a sad case. This building was built in 1869. Reporting live in Covington, I'm Joe Webb, Local 12 News. Rob? And such an unnecessary danger to the firefighters. Joe, when they tear these buildings down, who pays for that? Do they charge the land, I mean, the uh, homeowner or the landowner? Well, they do. They do charge the landowner, the property owner, if they can find them and if they can get any money out of them. But it's all too often, these buildings, many of these abandoned buildings, the firefighters describe as ownerless. They can't find the owner. They can't find them anywhere. The bank has taken them over, and usually the city ends up paying. Joe Webb, thanks very much. All of the fires are considered suspicious. The fire chief says two of them appear to have been intentionally set, and in one case, the fire reignited, and he thinks both times it was set.